Hi, it's Gene, retired in Mexico, and we ask one question on this channel. Do they write them and sing them like they used to? A lot of people, young and old, think the old music is better than the new music, but I'm not so sure. And that's the question that we're exploring one song at a time. And today I'm going to hit up the poll winner. This is poll number three that we had. And uh, the winner was Car Seat Headrest. Now, this is a band that I have heard a couple times, and uh, I don't know if I like them. I just don't know. I'm going to find out. So we're going to hit up the Tiny Desktop concert. It's, six, it's 17 minutes long, so I don't know if we'll do the whole thing, but uh, they probably, I'm guessing, are going to do three songs. So we'll listen to at least two of them, and then uh, I'll react to that. So if you like what we're doing here on the channel, hit that subscribe or like button, and let's go right into it, and then I'll do a, a little deep d dive into the lyrics. All right, here we go. And each song will be titled. The drum gets up. They'll have a real bad guy this time. Hung over dream. The drum. He hung around too long last night. The drum gets up. How will he feel about this one? The dream throws. Mm. That's a tiny drum kit. He's got it all. He's got it figured out. Name in the hall. Back in the hospital. I'm not concerned. He'll get it straight this time. And if he doesn't fuck it. Mm -hmm. So very simple arrangement, right? Acoustic guitar and percussion. The gun goes off. He's always off about something. The drum just nods. <laughs> the drum ain't listening at all. The drum gets drunk. I've never seen a drum kit that small. The drum reads James Joyce in the drum. James the Joyce. Dream falls down. The drum's face breaks, the dreams fall. He don't have shit. He's learned to live with it. The drum's in debt. You owe me, don't forget that 20 bucks. Interest and moral support. And a lot of humor in this song. So it's called the drum. There's that. That little kiss. This is our lifetime and I am his creator A young man so they fall apart by separate poles of gravity This is our lifetime, I am his creator A young man so they fall apart by separate poles of gravity The mm. drum goes forth Got some interesting bends there this on the guitar
let's look at those lyrics now. Um, let's take a look right now at those. Uh, car seat headrest, the drum. So give me a second to bring this up. So obviously he's got a um, unique vocal style. So we'll play the next song. So let's see. The drum wakes up. He'll have a real... Oh, I hate when it does that. <laughs> He'll have a real black eye this time. Hungover dream. He hung around too long last night. The drum gets up. How will he feel about this one? The dream throws up. He didn't feel too good this time. So what I'm taking this to mean is a drum is something that you, you, you beat that you strike and um, so how does a drum feel the, you know the next morning right so a lot of humor in this song the course he's got it all he's got it figured out dream in the hall back in the hospital I'm not concerned he'll get it straight this time and he do, it, and if he doesn't fuck it the gun goes off He's always off about something. The drum just nods. The drum ain't listening at all. Let's see what the uh, annotation says on that. People love to talk and tell you all about themselves and their thoughts and ideas, but have no interest in anyone but themselves, not even listening to your response. The gun goes off. He, he's always off about something. The drum just nods. The drum ain't listening at all. Okay. The drum gets drunk. The drum reads James Joyce. J reads James Joyce in The Drunk. This is based on a friend of mine, though it turns out he's only interested in the childhood section of Portrait of the Artist, despite my repeated recommendations of Ulysses. That's hilarious. He doesn't get the chorus. He doesn't give a shit. He's learned to live with it. The drum's in debt. You owe me. Don't forget that 20 bucks. <laughs> Interest in moral support, and if you don't swear... The bridge. This is our lifetime, and I am his creator, a young man slowly pulled apart by separate poles of gravity. This is our lifetime, and I am his creator, a young man slowly pulled apart by separate poles of gravity. And he, he repeats that. So let's see what this says. The bridge came to me in a dream with snowman in the place of young man. Okay. Uh, let's see, the drum goes forth, he's got his flag unfurled or something. Let's see what that says. The drum is seemingly going to be doing some sort of protesting, but not with enough conviction for the narrator to take enough notice, be able to fully make some sense of what he's doing. The drum won't stop, the drum's a menace to the public. A reference to a lyric off of Strangers, okay. Uh, which I'm not familiar with. Hold your drum high. The drum is stoned again. Don't wake him up. He'll just start talking. The drum is dead. The drum is dead. Long live the drum. Okay. So I take this as a song that's just using the drum as a replacement or metaphor for a person who overdoes it. And, uh, you know, people say your head, uh, if you have a hangover, your head is, uh, be you know it can be pounding like a drum right so okay so it's a nice little metaphor cute song um, let's go ahead and hit the next one up and maybe we can uh, let's see here yeah let's go ahead and hit the next song up hi everybody I'm Will these are my bandmates who are not really playing anything today other than a, a fake drum set. This is my tour drum set. Yeah. And these are my friends from Leesburg who came to visit. So say hi everybody. Hi everybody. Hi. And here's a new song. Well, new to you. In the back seat of my heart. Tells me I'm a mess. Oh, drunk drivers killer whales. Couldn't get the car to start. 
Left my keys somewhere in the mess. We'll go ahead and read the lyrics along with the song. It comes and goes in plateaus. One month later, I'm a fucking pro. My parents would be proud. Or fall asleep on the floor. Forget what happened in the morning. There are notes in your handwriting, so you can make it up. We are not a proud race. It's not a race at all. We're just trying. I'm only trying to get home. Drunk travelers, drunk travelers. This is not a good thing. I don't mean to rationalize or try and explain it away. It's not okay, drunk drivers, drunk drivers. It's too late to articulate it. That empty feeling. The same fate as the people you hate You built yourself up against others' feelings And it left you feeling empty As a car coasting downhill I have become such a negative person It was all just an act It was all so easily so you got all these other band members here. He's just playing on the acoustic. Maybe we can learn how to start again. Like a child who's never done wrong. Who hasn't taken that first step. We are not a proud race. It's not a race at all. We're just trying. I'm only trying to get home Drunk drivers, drunk drivers Put it out of your mind And perish the thought There's no comfort in responsibility Drunk drivers, drunk drivers Doesn't have to be like this It doesn't have to be in your head giving you shit again but you know he loves you and he doesn't mean to cause you pain please listen to him it's not too late turn off the engine get out of the car and start to walk drunk driver Drunk drivers, drunk drivers, drunk drivers. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be like this. Kill the whales, kill the whales. It doesn't have to be like this. It doesn't have to be like this.
So I saw that this is one of their uh, top five songs on Spotify. Millions of streams. Let's see what the annotations got to say about this. I'll move me over here and because uh, there's a lot of uh, annotation here. In the back seat of my heart, my love tells me I'm a mess. So he personified in both songs. So in the first song it was a drum, and in this song it's his heart and then his mind. And he talks about these things as if it's a, a person or something outside himself. Obviously the heart and the mind are inside you. But he's personifying them the same as he did with the drum. Let's see, if your back seat is anything like mine, let me bring my, me down a little bit here, it's probably covered with a sedimentary layer of garbage and CD cases and old clothes. Now, how do they get that out of this line? Uh, well, let's see. I couldn't get the car to start. I left my keys somewhere in the mess. After the conversation instigated in the beginning lines, the narr narrator is unable to move on with his new love because his ability to move on has been negated by losing his keys in the mess, meaning the key to loving again is lost somewhere in his past relationships, which must be extremely painful since he's let them accrue into such a mess. Hmm. Yeah, there's a lot of annotation on these lyrics. Uh, it comes and goes in plateaus. The it in this line can really represent anything that the listener could find as a recurring, unstoppable feeling. Example, loneliness, existential dread, depression, anxiety, and how the narrator begrudgingly struggles to get a handle on these feelings, calling himself a fucking pro, and mentioning that his parents would be proud insinuating that his parents were likely the kind that taught him to suppress unhappy emotions for the sake of the people around him. Man, this is a lot of annotation for some lyrics that I'm, you know, again, uh, I'm genius. I'm never sure how they draw all of this out, um, whether it's based on interviews or what. Let's see, or fall asleep on the floor, forget what happened in the morning. There are notes in your handwriting, but you can't make it out. Hmm. Uh, you're a different person when you're drunk than sober. Okay. We are not a proud race. The race here is subjective in the general sense of the human race. Might also mean the younger generation, since many of us have this hollow sense that the achievements we've made in life are actually nothing to be proud of, leaving a void that still needs to be filled. Wow, there's just so much annotation on here. So let's see what they say about drunk drivers. The song has two meanings. The literal meaning is that CSH knows it's not a good idea to drive drunk and he doesn't mean to make excuses for himself, but he wants to get home. The second meaning refers to why he's drinking and he's just trying to get on with his life and he'll do it however he can, even if it's not necessarily good for him. We're just trying, I'm only trying to get home. Drunk drivers, drunk drivers. You see, when I first listened to this song, I thought he was pointing a finger at people who drink and drive, but he's talking about himself, which is pretty darn interesting. Um, it's too late to articulate it, that empty feeling. You share the same fate, the people you hate. You build yourself up against other, others' feelings and it left you feeling empty as a car coasting down, downhill. I have become such a negative person. It was all such an act. It was so easily stripped away. Let's see what the annotation is on these last three lines. Um, yeah, I'm going to skip over that. Uh, but if we learned how to live like this, maybe we can learn how to start again like a child who's never done wrong, which is a nice line. I like that. 
who hasn't taken that first step. And then he repeats the we, we are not a proud race. And then he goes into his killer whales line. Uh, Will is referencing Talikum, a killer whale at SeaWorld that caused the deaths of three individuals. I remember that. Talikum was the subject of the 2013 documentary Blackfish, which I did watch. That was a very interesting documentary, which concerns the controversy of captive killer whales. Will is cleverly comparing these consequences of animal captivity and its unnecessary existence to the metaphor of drunk drivers in the first half of the song. Drunk drivers stands for the negative effects we have on each other as a result of acting out of self-interest. We, if we take the responsibility for our own choices in life, however difficult that may be, there's no comfort and responsibility. We can change our behavior and stop feeding a harmful system. We can stop holding animals captive and also stop living our lives with the absence of responsibility and hence stop causing others, stop causing hurt to others. It simply doesn't have to be like this. And here's that line about here's that voice in your head giving you shit again. So again, he's, per, he's personifying his thoughts as if it's another person. But you know he loves you and he doesn't mean to cause you pain. Please listen to him. <laughs> yeah, that's good advice. It's not too late. Turn off the engine, get out of the car, and start to walk. Okay. So, yeah, I, you know, so first of all, let's talk about Will's voice, right? It's very unique. And it's obviously love it or hate it and I'm fine with his voice um, uh, do I love it I like it I'll say I like it I don't know that I love it but it's uh, and then the uh, chord progressions were pretty standard but the lyrics are above average right so he's got uh, a pretty good set of lyrics here on both of these songs and he's obviously a smart guy and so I like I like that quite a bit. I like the words. Um, so I'll finish with this. Here's how I view music like this. So we used to have scenes. Doesn't matter what it was, but uh, let's take the '60s. You had garage rock, and you had psychedelia, and in the '70s you had um, album-oriented rock. You had uh, punk, you had disco, you had post-punk. In the 80s, you had synth pop. In the 90s, you had uh, grunge and you had techno. And then all of a sudden in the 21st century, no scenes. And this is what confuses a lot of my peers, okay? They, they say, well, there's, you know, they look at a lack of scenes. And it was a friend of mine who said, very astutely, he said, well, we're in an era now where everybody's a genre of one. And I think of artists like, you know, I sometimes when I'm talking to people, I'll pick on someone like Suf Jan Stevens. I hear a song by him, doesn't sound like anybody else. So his genre is Suf Jan Stevens. That's his genre. He, he, he doesn't have a crowd or a scene surrounding him. He's just one artist with a singular sound. And I think Will has crafted a singular sound here. And that's how I view this. It's, uh, that's, that's very typical of the 21st century, is people who have their own, they've crafted their own signature sound. And so if I heard Car Seat Headrest again, I would know them. I would say, ah, that's Will, he's singing. So what that means is that you have to, if you're not into a scene or a genre, then you're either into that artist or you're not into that artist. And so what I'll say about this is I really liked it. Um, I'm kind of going to refrain from a letter grade because I think it's not completely my cup of tea, if you know that phrase. Maybe I'm dating myself with that. So I liked it. I don't know that I loved it. And so I've always promised I'll be honest on the channel. But I have to be objective here. It's good stuff. It's good stuff, and uh, I like what he's doing, and I can certainly understand why he's got fans and so many listens on Spotify. So, you know, it's just personal taste. There's nothing wrong with the music whatsoever.
and I just uh, liked it and didn't love it. So that's my take on it. I'll have to check that out a little further. I'm going to hold off on the last song. Uh, I didn't get to see the rest of the band play. That would have been nice. Uh, because I think Car Seat Headrest is a legitimate band and not just a moniker for one person. But maybe in this case it's kind of half and half. But those guys were just sitting on the floor that whole second song. So I, uh, I feel like I didn't get a chance to really check out the band per se. So we might hit these guys up again. Um, I think if I spend more time with them, I'll like them even more than I did today. So I have a good reaction to the song. So as we say here in Mexico, buen dia, and thanks for joining me on the channel today. Thanks.